Situated right here is the famous Charles Schwab building. Now, I personally use Charles Schwab. I think they're a fantastic brokerage, and I see why they have so many employees. And in San Francisco, they are headquartered here. The Charles Schwab building in downtown San Francisco, and they're actually pretty close to the water, which means that the location of this area is still pretty good. Now, we all like to dog on San Francisco, but let's be real, the downtown near the water area it's still like an okay place to live. It still commands a very high rent, but it's starting to get empty every single day. And now, Charles Schwab is leaving this era. They don't want to be here. The employees don't want to be here. And it's time for them to just yeet out. Now, if you look at San Francisco, it's basically a dead town. And even Google Street View shows you pretty much the streets being completely vacant. And one of the most heavily office space in the United States. And Charles Schwab, in my opinion, is probably making a really smart move considering all their other neighbors are leaving. Salesforce have cut down their space. Skills, which is this gaming company, they have completely left for Las Vegas. You also have Uber, Lyft, all downgrading their office. Airbnb, who is super loyal to San Francisco because that's where they were born, in San Francisco. Like the founder rented out one of their San Francisco rooms and that's how Airbnb got started. Airbnb has now closed down every single one of their offices and only have one single office left, 888 Howard Street, and that's it. So Charles Schwab, they are now leaving this place. They don't wanna be here. And this isn't the first time that they started dumping San Francisco office space. Employees at Schwab's 211 Main Street location will be eligible for remote work. Now, obviously not everyone's gonna get remote work and not everyone's gonna pick remote work. And there's still gonna be some people walking to the office in 211 Main Street. But let's be real, everyone is begging for remote work. And I don't really blame them considering how bad the street conditions are. And when I was talking about how bad the street conditions, I'm not talking about, oh, maybe like, a few shoplifting incidences. I'm talking about straight violence on the street, people just doing drugs on the street, fentanyl everywhere, needles everywhere. You also have all sorts of sinful things happening on the streets of San Francisco. Nothing's ever being done, right? Now, Schwab is also gonna be closing several of their other office space, but the San Francisco one, they've been wanting to close for a very, very long time, simply because San Francisco is just not a place for, you know, have fun. Now, remember, the downtowns of America, they all vary a little bit. San Francisco's downtown used to be absolutely lit, but now it's pretty much deteriorated. No office workers, nobody here. It's just a sad, sad place. Now, if you go to Chicago, as bad as Chicago is, their downtown still has a lot of foot traffic because their downtown is probably the only bastions left where it's actually somewhat decent. Same thing with Manhattan's Fifth Avenue. At night, it's still packed with people. Same thing with Brickle, Miami, and even a little bit of downtown Seattle. It's all packed with tourism and packed with people partying, having fun on Fridays and Saturdays. But San Francisco, on the other hand, nobody's partying, nobody's having fun. Charles Schwab knows this, and this is why they're just straight up leaving. They don't wanna deal with this crap, and they also know that having these offices are extremely expensive. And when Charles Schwab leaves, let's be real, the tech companies have already left. Most tech companies are only willing to downsize their office rather than increase their space. Uber is still trying to sublease their quarter million square feet office to this day, which they spent hundreds of millions of dollars getting it and renovating it. So like I said before, a lot of these companies will save on massive amounts of money just getting their employees to work from home. And honestly, it's a pretty smart decision. And like I said before, San Francisco is so bad that hundreds of federal employees are told to work remote because of the crime. I'm sure you guys have seen some of the videos, but if you haven't, it's basically someone on Twitter, they were filming the streets of the federal building, which is very, very close to the Twitter HQ. It's around this area. It's scary, okay? It's just homeless people everywhere, people doing drugs, tents everywhere, and I kind of see why the federal building told their employees just to work from home until they say it's safe to come back, which is probably never safe to come back in San Francisco. And the crazy thing about San Francisco isn't really the crime, the tents, or the craziness of the city, but it's 
just the city just doesn't do anything, or at least they don't do enough. Really, they don't do anything. I mean, if you have like a multifamily building and you're making money from rent and suddenly there's like five tents that pop up in front of your apartment building, well, good luck calling the city. They're not going to do anything. And property values of your building is going to go down and residents are going to leave for other parts. And then if you have a restaurant, same thing. Art gallery, same thing. If you have any small business, it's the same thing. If you have a bunch of tents, people doing drugs in front of your place, you're not going to get business and you're, you can't really get them away either. And this is why so many small businesses are leaving San Francisco. And as these businesses leave, it's a loop. Employees go online and employees leave. Employees don't find any attraction to the city anymore. Market Street is basically vacant at this point. And the city is getting more dangerous to walk around than ever before. Here's the thing. People will easily come back to San Francisco if they just fix things up. I mean, just pull a San Diego at this point. Just ban tents, right? Ban smoking fentanyl on the streets. Really not that hard. And then designate certain areas of the city for tents and homeless people and people who are in need. And when businesses come back, you tax them and then use the money to help the homeless. That's exactly what San Diego is doing. And that's why San Diego basically saved their city. They didn't want to become another San Francisco. You look at some of these hotels. It's sad. These hotels, which are icons of San Francisco, are now shutting down because they are not getting any type of business. Okay, There's several properties on San Francisco area that's foreclosing. And we already have one or two billion dollars worth of real estate foreclosures last quarter. I don't want another one or two billion dollars of foreclosures again, but I can't really do anything because now a lot of the businesses for these hotels are going down the hill. Like this hotel, Club Quarters, used to have very, very good occupancy rates. Now it's completely vacant because there's no tourism and they're shutting down. You know, like office and retail vacancies in San Francisco before the pandemic was like 1%. It was at like one of the lowest in the entire country. And that was why it was so vibrant, despite it was still like, it still had really bad stuff to it. But now the vacancies are like almost 40%. And I kind of see why everyone just wants to leave at this point. San Francisco really screwed up at this point. They really screwed up. They didn't do the city well, okay? When people came back from the pandemic, they were expecting to have some fun in the city, but all they saw was just craziness. And highest car break-ins in the entire country. Right, Bay Area. The most robbed Walgreens is in San Francisco. You don't exactly want to be in the area where that kind of stuff is happening. Like I said before, with Charles Schwab moving remote and several other companies and also financial institutions are doing the same thing, commuters are staying at home. The transit agencies like the Bay Area Rapid Transit or BART's has suffered so much money that they're probably going to be needing a state bailout and possibly a new business model. Same thing with like the bus stations. They're losing so much money. Nobody's commuting. Nobody's coming here. All the employees are working from home. And in fact, a lot of employees are pretty happy to work from home. If you ask some of the San Francisco employees, they say they like working in San Francisco, but now with the shops gone, their friends gone, and everyone going to remotes, they kind of want to go remote as well. And that's exactly what's happening. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.